Y ya. My name is Steve Shop. I live in Walton. A long ways away from the rail line in the property in question. Uh, in your June meeting, when Lynn Larbach made a motion to suspend property acquisition, and there was no second. At that juncture, the light rail line to Milwaukee was estimated to cost $1.4 billion, anticipating a 60% federal match. There was more than enough reason to be prudent at that juncture and suspend the property acquisition, in fact, suspend the entire project. Uh, the private board chose not to, and they passed their, their budget and proceeded forward. Uh, since that time, we've discovered that $100 million has been added to the estimate. It's now $1.5 billion and adding. My understanding is that the actual cost, as in the cash price, for construction has not gone up. But what has gone up is the financing money, and that's strictly because of the federal government's unwillingness to fund it at such a high rate. Uh, that number does not include uh, many multi-million dollar segments, including work at South Waterfront to move the streetcar, move Moody Street, and raise the site 14 feet, not included in the TriMet Milwaukee Portland Light Rail budget. And that is not a direct cost of the light rail line. Specifically, it would be a nice, possibly needed thing to have for the development in the area, regardless of the rail line. And moving the streetcar has always been planned, that the current one is a temporary. Uh, since that time, we also learned that the federal match is 50%, not 60%. Now, I'm not sure when the TriMet board discovered that, but we know with absolute certainty that TriMet management knew a year ago. The truth is that while the federal government may have been discussing limiting the amount back then, Political winds in Washington can and do change, and the federal government in the past has been very favorable to the district. Until only a few weeks ago, they were proceeding as if they had the 60% match and were very close to obtaining the local gap that was needed. Well, we know that's not true. The gap has widened. We also know that you need additional service, obviously, for the elderly and the disabled. We also know that you need additional bus service. Not unlike the area in East Portland, the very area you're attempting to serve light rail to, the McLaughlin area plan, has a very similar dis de deficiency in bus service. They have north and south lines that run on River Road, Webster Road, and McLaughlin with no east and west routes. First of all, I think the hope is that TriMet's finances, because of the economy, will, will improve. So they have enough money for both the MAX line and bus service. Second, I think you forgot the service along Oatfield, and also, while there may not be east and west service, that doesn't mean you can't get places, because you can take one of the north-south routes to either Milwaukee or Gladstone and transfer to a, another north-south route and get places. In fact, buried in the Milwaukee-Oakland area plan, there is a recommendation that somehow east and west shuttle service is created because they have the same problem that East Portland does. So you have an area there that needs additional bus service, not light rail. And in any case, the area you're describing is south and totally separate of where the light rail line is going to go. So it's really talking about two different groups of people. We didn't, this situation with the TriMet didn't sneak up on y'all, and, and obviously by the unfunded liabilities and benefits packages, it's an enormous and severe problem. Now as the funding for Milwaukee Light Rail is unraveling, you're setting fire to more money here and proceeding forward with the acquisition of property. And I'm here to tell you, you're out of touch. I am in touch. I can tell you in the last 24 hours, I've been notified by people in the mix that there was a war raging, political war raging out at Clackamas and one in South Waterfront at the same time. And just who are those people? And also, got to remember that TriMet's general fund is not going to pay for these property acquisitions. That your likelihood of getting any Clackamas funding is nearly nil. 
And I would predict right now, this, this Milwaukee light rail line, you will not have local maps even put in the government grant application in, in the fall. The line will never be built. And you are indeed setting, setting fire to millions of dollars as you proceed forward. Given that I think Clackamas County really wants the line, I would expect that they would come up with money for it. Not unlike, not unlike the, uh, the 50 percent versus 60 percent misrepresentation by the management, we also have another problem. In my hands right here is a survey questionnaire that was performed in the Willapan area plan. It clearly states no desire for Milwaukee light rail. In fact, it's a very low priority. And so I contend that the board has also been misrepresented about whether or not the area even wants light rail. What they do want, and it's, it's spelled out very clearly, and I'll give you this copy of it, is they want an enhanced law enforcement. And they want a safe community. And TriMet has what to do with providing those things, unless you believe that one way of limiting crime is to limit the ease of which people can get around. And also, we're not talking about urban renewal here, I know, which arguably can take money away from police. Again, as I said, it sounds like the McLaughlin area plan is not where the light rail line is planned to run and aren't the real people to ask. And I also mentioned the 50 versus 60 percent earlier about how winds can change in Washington, and they were hoping for that. And they want bus service. They want local service, just like East Portland. So again, we have the exact same problems, East Portland, Lenoma area. You have no funding for Milwaukee Light Rail, and you're proceeding recklessly, as you know you are, if you take the advice of management and give them again what they want. Is what they're doing of, of buying property a gamble now? Yes, but sometimes in life, gambling is how you get ahead. And specifically, they're buying property from people who are willing sellers and have a justification to sell that otherwise could not sell and would have a cloud hanging over their property. And so I urge you to really grasp what's going on here because there is a, a serious war, political war being raised out there at the county chair in Clackamas County, in the city of Portland, South Waterfront, and maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe the powerful forces you deal with and listen to don't tune you into what's going on, but I can assure you that tax increment financing is circling the drain, and that's why you get the, the message from Metro that's scrambling for more money. There's also a big message that they're gonna, Steve, one, more, one more item right. up with, one more. <laughs> There's also another pursuit to start doing what Portland's done and attacking the budgets of local sewer and water districts out in the areas. So the scramble for money is, is great. The funding's not there, and it won't be. Preserve the transit service and get back to higher priorities. Thank you. Thanks.